So you said that you went to a Mormon rehab. Yeah. What, what is that? Um, so it's like one of those, uh, troubled teen centers that like Paris Hilton went to. Um, okay. If you saw like that documentary that she had where they're, they are like crazy. Um, I failed a drug test for weed when I was like 17. And then my mom found like my fake IDs, which I'm like, how, like, you know, I drink, like how else do you think I'm buying alcohol? And then, um, I thought I was like good to go. I didn't even know I failed the drug test for weed. I thought I was straight chilling. And then, um, like a week or two later, people came to my house and were like, you're coming with me. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then my mom was behind them and she's like, yes, you are. And then, um, they were like really buff people. And they were like, if you try to run, we'll tackle you. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be tackled. So I just like went with them. My mom turned my phone off and they drove me all the way to Southern Utah. Um, where I went to two different rehabs. Uh, the first one, my parents like figured out it was bad pretty early on. They told my mom I was in school there. They didn't even have a teacher. Like they didn't have any school. I wasn't getting anything done. And my mom was like, well, she needs to fucking graduate. So then she sent me to one down the street. Both were fairly emotionally abusive, I'd say. Um, like the first one, I wasn't even allowed to speak. Like I did not have the right to speak for the f- whole six weeks I was there. Um, I was allowed to ask to go to the bathroom to staff. I was allowed to talk if the therapist was present, which was like, I don't know, twice a week, something like that. But other than that, we were not allowed to speak to each other. Um, or even like have conversations with the staff. Some staff would kind of fold, but like, I did not have the right to speak. Um, and then they would make me like rewrite my letters to home to make it sound like it's the best place ever. So I didn't even have like that option to tell my parents how it really was. The second place was like definitely better there. I know there was like abuse happening there too. Um, like two teachers got arrested for child pornography. Um, so, and those were teachers there for a very long time. Um, I guess they were selling pornography of their adopted kids and they had like 12 and I'm just assuming that they had some of the girls cause one of them was the soccer coach I'm just assuming that yeah. there's something about us in there <laughs> um, so th- since there was cameras in like every single room. Okay. So these are people that are working at a facility that's supposed to like help you, but they help. all exploit you. So, okay. So you said um, for like endangered teens, like what are they considered endangered teens? Is it like, Oh, it's like a troubled teen. Um, so like your parents can send you for any reason, for whatever, um, because they want money. They're not right. in it to help you. Right. No one, no one is there to help you. Um, not even the fucking therapist. Cause the therapists lie to your parents about your progress, progress so that they keep you there longer. The therapists work with like the campus leaders to lie to your parents to get you to stay longer. And they lie about everything happening in like the facility and the rehab. Um, the Mormon staff there, specifically the men, And some of the Mormon women too would call all the girls campus whores. And the woman, even in this rehab, didn't have as many rights as the men. The men could go unsupervised on the football fields. They had better field trips. They even got a field trip to like a race car track. The woman, we didn't have any of that shit. So what were some of the, like, what were the classes? Like what, what were you doing all day? Um, I ended up graduating in like three months because that's all I did all day, every day. I didn't get along with a lot of other people in the rehab. Um, At least when I first got there, like I was there for weed and there were some people there who were like either in gangs or, um, you know, there for actual drug addictions. And then I was just like, yeah, I filled a drug test for weed. And then I got, I got bullied really, really hard until I became friends with my friend Colby, who is like six, two. Mm-hmm. And she's like, if you guys fuck with her, you have to go through me basically. And then that's when people started being kind of nice to me. Mm-hmm. I was terrified for my first like month or two there. So was it kind of like a regular school where they were teaching you or they were supposedly teaching you a regular curriculum? You would just had really like strict, um, parameters or were they teaching you like, were there like, was it like an anti-drug program where they're like um, anti like abstinence classes, like stuff like that? Uh, I wouldn't say there were any like abstinence classes or even like anti-drug classes. You had a therapist that you met with once a week, but I hated my therapist, hated him. I still hate you if you're watching, but I don't (laughs) think he pays attention because like I caught him in so many lies to my parents to the point that he was like begging for my forgiveness, being like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, 
you lost your chance. Like I was like requesting another therapist. So my parents pulled me early because mm-hmm. they're like this. Like they were like, we're sorry yeah. for putting you through all of this. Um, but there were normal teachers. Like I, I took normal online classes. I took, uh, uh, what is it? It's not AP honors. I took honors, all honors classes. So mm-hmm. I had like a 4.2 GPA or something leaving the school. Mm-hmm. And then I started taking college classes while I was there. Cause I was just like, so bored. I graduated so soon. I just thought like, Oh, I graduated so early. Like I technically graduated in 2014. So I was like, my parents need to pull me early. No, I was there for another like three months. <laughs> um, so my mistake for thinking that. So then I was like, okay, I guess I'll take like a college class. Like, I don't know what else to do with my days. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was like a school, but it was like a, it was kind of like a, a continuation Mon- school. We call it like continuation schools here. Yeah. It was like Monday through Friday. We would have school from like eight to three, kind of like normal. And then after that we'd have like, we'd have to go like to a yard and like do something active. Mm-hmm. But like my stress was so bad that I had like tendonitis from like the bottom of my ankles to my knees. So I couldn't even do anything active. That is just like a stress response. Yeah. Like I wasn't doing anything else to like cause that kind of reaction, but it was just stress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. 